Hi friends! Today is going to be my TBR takedown for the month of September. If you are new here, the TBR takedown is a game that I've been playing trying to get my physical unread TBR shelf down from like 240, hopefully down to about 50 by the time I get to where I feel like I need to be. For the month of September, I started with 170 books on my physical unread TBR shelf. It's a lot. Let's hop into it and see where we are this month. We will start with the books that I hauled and then go into the books that I read. So books that I've hauled. I hauled books two, three, four, five, and six of the Sarah Normal series. So that is Haunted Memories, Mischief Night, Spirits of the Season, Moment of Truth, and Giving Up the Ghost. This series follows Sarah who is a young girl, I think she's like 12 or maybe 13, and she can see ghosts. She's been able to see them since she was a little girl. She can see them but she's never really interacted with them. And I read the first book in this series during my Summer Scare Readathon and I really loved it so I wanted to continue on with it during October for the spooky month so I picked up the next five books in the series. Um, basically the first book takes place, Sarah has moved from the west coast to the east coast which is kind of a continuing theme with people who can see ghosts. They typically are moving from one place to another place that's older or has been um, civilized longer so there's always more ghosts there. It's kind of a thing that people do. Um, a lot of time they'll either move from the west coast to the east coast or from the east coast to Europe because they are more infiltrated with ghosts because apparently there's more dead people there. I don't know. It's a thing. And she moves from the west coast to the east coast and when she gets to this new town there are more ghosts than she's ever really seen before and they start communicating with her. And it just follows her trying to figure out why she can see ghosts, why they talk to her. She doesn't know anyone else who can see them. They're mid-grade, they're short, and I love them. Or at least I love the one I've read so far. Then I hauled A Torch Against the Night and A Reaper at the Gates by Saba Tahir. I read the first book in this series, A Number in the Ashes, last month. And so I wanted to continue on with the series. As you can tell from the bookmark, I've started reading this one. I'm about 50% in, but I haven't finished it yet. And then we'll get to this one. And then the fourth book, I think, comes out either this month or next month. It comes out soon, sometime. So I'm really enjoying these. The series follows Laia, who is a scholar. And basically, in the world that she lives in, scholars are treated very poorly and oftentimes are forced into slavery. The book starts out with Laia being with her grandparents and her older brother and their family is ransacked by a group of the marshals or the people who rule the kingdom and they, it's not a kingdom, it's an emperordom? Either way, it's an empire. Um, the people who rule the empire and they kill her grandparents and kidnap her brother and she is able to escape but she wants to save her brother so she finds a rebel organization and tries to convince them to help her save her brother and in order for them to do that they make her go undercover as a slave into the leader of the army's house and the other main character is Elias who is one of the soldiers and he just doesn't feel like things are necessarily the way they should be and there is a trial of who's going to become the next emperor and Elias is part of the trial and they have form an unlikely friendship and and and. Side note, if you can see how dirty my shelves are currently, I apologize. Uh, you're gonna have to look at them for a few more few more videos because I'm not reorganizing or cleaning my shelves until the last week of October but by the last week of October I will be reorganizing this whole thing and giving it a good clean but right now they're really dusty. This month I also hauled Allied by Amy Tintera. This is the third book in the Ruined trilogy and I don't remember what it's about and I haven't started reading it yet. I just happened to catch this on sale so I went for it because I already have the first two books. Why not? And then we have this month's Alcrate book which was Horrid by Katrina Leno. I haven't read any Katrina Leno's yet but this one sounds like it's going to be pretty decent. This book follows a girl who, much like another girl we've recently discussed, moves from the west coast to the east coast after the death of her father with her mother to her mother's childhood home and she does not really want to go there but she's there and the house is dilapidated and it's kind of a hot mess and there's a room that's kept locked 
for storage except it's not really locked for storage it's locked for something else and we don't know what and the book is us figuring that out i'm not a huge fan of this cover but because it's an outcrate edition and julie at pages and pens pointed this out it has this lovely artwork on the inside so i do think i will be reversing this cover because i am not a huge fan of this that's for another day. Next we have Fable by Adrienne Young. Adrienne wrote one of my favorite books of last year. Well it wasn't a favorite book of last year. It was one of my favorites that I read last year and that is Sky in the Deep. So I have been devouring her work since then. And Fable follows a young girl by the name of Fable and she is, I guess her father is like a traitor but kind of maybe also a pirate it seems like. Uh, she's lived her whole life on the ocean and her mother drowns and when her mother drowns her father decides that he's going to leave her on this island that is inhabited by some pretty nasty people and she has spent her life there kind of trying to avoid everyone and make the best of the situation but she really wants to get back to her father and to the life that she has always known and she enlists the help of a young boy by the name of West and so she and West go on this quest to help her find her father and it seems as though every enemy that he had and everything he was fighting against when she left has multiplied since then and West is not exactly what he seems and it's gonna be an interesting ride for sure. We then have The Lost Book of the White by Cassie Clare and Wesley Chu. This is the second book in The Eldest Curses following the Red Scrolls of Magic. The series follows Magnus and Alec during different periods of their lifetime. Um, the first book took place between the middle of the Mortal Instruments series and I believe this takes place at the end in between the mortal instruments and the dark artifices i could be wrong but i think so i don't i didn't really read the synopsis for this one so i don't know what it's about but it's a shadow hunters novel so we all know i'm gonna read it and love it next is cemetery boys by aiden thomas this book is a i would say like a fantasy romance mystery book it's kind of hard to find an actual genre for this book it has a lot of different things going on in it this book follows yadriel who is a queer trans latinx character who is an own voices character follows yadriel as he tries to convince his family to allow him to be a brujo or someone in their family the men are able to see ghosts and they kind of help them move through to the afterlife and the women are known as the healers and yadriel has always been raised to be a healer but because yadriel isn't a woman they want to be a brujo rather than a bruja and in order to try to prove himself Yadriel and his cousin Maritza decide to kind of perform their own ceremony make Yadriel a brujo and allow him to raise a ghost of a family member who has recently deceased except he raises the wrong ghost and the ghost that he raises is of Julian who is a bad boy from his local school and basically it's just a free-for-all after that. Um, they're trying to discover what happened to Julian, um, why he died, because he doesn't really remember. He was alive, but then he was dead, and he didn't really know what happened. And Yadriel is trying to hide him from his family, because he doesn't want his family to know that he attempted to do a thing and didn't do it exactly correctly. And it's a really fun book. Obviously, I've read it since I bought it. Um, and I highly recommend it, but that's not the wrap up. This is just that I purchased this book, but I highly recommend it. Anyway, buy it. It's great. And the last four are books that I have already read. The first of which is Undead Girl Gang by Lily Anderson. This is the paperback version. I already have the hardcover, but I really like this book and the paperback cover is different. So naturally, I had to have it because it was on sale at Walmart for pretty cheap, so had to pick that up. This book follows a self-proclaimed fat Latinx witch named Mila and uh, basically her best friend Riley dies and they, the town has concluded that she committed suicide and Mila does not believe that that is the case so Mila tries to raise Riley from the dead in order to find out why she died or how she died and in the process of doing so also brings back two of the town's mean girls who have died recently under suspicious suspicious circumstances as well and the book follows Mila trying to help the girls remember what happened to them in order for them to all to figure out 
what is going on in the town and why the girls were killed. And FYI, the end of this book is disgusting and I loved it. Also, we have Well Played by Jen DeLuca. This is the follow-up to Well Met by Jen DeLuca. It takes place at a Renaissance festival. Uh, you don't have to have read the first one to read this one, but I do highly recommend it because, I mean, it's a series and you'll meet the first couple in this book as well so you should read their story before you go into this couple's story. I really enjoyed this book. It does again take place at a renaissance festival. I didn't get to go to the renaissance festival this year because it was cancelled so I really enjoyed this book because it definitely got me out of my I want to go to the renaissance festival slump so if you're one of those people who really enjoys the renaissance festival how many times could you say renaissance festival in this? I don't know a lot then I highly recommend that you pick this book up. It is great. If you don't like the renaissance festival it's still awesome. It's got some really nice adult fun time scenes and uh it's a little steamy and I just really enjoyed it. I guess I should tell you that this one does specifically follow Stacy, who has never really been lucky in love. She's kind of had a not even really a friends with benefits with the guy from one of the acts. Really they just kind of meet up at the hotel and bang it out and move on with life. And she kind of thinks that maybe he wants more from their relationship and they start communicating via text messaging and emailing over time while they're not at the Renaissance Festival. But when they get back to the Renaissance Festival she finds out that she wasn't talking to him. She was talking to somebody else. Who, may you ask? Well, you'll have to read to find out. And the final two books that I hold this month are The Lost City and The Morning Flower by Amanda Hawking. I read these last month, so I'll link last month's wrap-up in the description box below if you want to know how I felt about either of these. Um, basically, this series is the third trilogy in Amanda Hawking's Troll series. So these are the first two books of the Omti Origins. I had arcs of them. I uh, really enjoyed them, so I went ahead and picked up the physical copies. If you like troll stories or you like changelings, um, if you've liked any of Amanda's other works, I think these definitely um, follow the same vein with Amanda's works previously. I really enjoy her writing. It's super fun. I love the romances. This one specifically follows Ula who is a troll and she was left on the doorstep of some humans when she was a baby, like days old. And they raised her until she was like 12 or 13 and then another troll family took her in and she was basically their babysitter, live-in babysitter. Um, she was very well treated by them. She wasn't like the help. She was part of their family. Um, and she wants to know more about her family so she goes to this really prestigious city in the troll world where they study um, different things about their histories and their genetics and things like that and she's trying to figure out who her family is and she meets a cute boy there and it's really great. What I would also like to point out is that this series follows Ula who is not a stick thin um, beautifully crafted body of a character. Um, she is described as um, plus size and not the most attractive character which is great to see in the text but also on the cover um, I know that, like, this character, like, she's not my size plus size. I would definitely say that she's, like, a mid-size person, but she's not, like, they put a whole body photo of a not stick-thin person on the cover of a book, and I am so stoked about it. I love it any time. They did that with, um, Undead Girl Gang as well. Um, not a stick thin character, definitely like a mid size to plus size character. Um, and as the character of the book is described as that, it's so wonderful to see things like this. Like representation is great of all of all kinds, like any kind of representation that isn't straight thin white people. Great. And now I will very quickly go through my reads for the month. So in the order that I read them, Siege and Storm by Lee Bardugo, Home Before Dark by Riley Sager, Teardrop by Lauren Kate, The Final Girls by Riley Sager, Well Played by Jen DeLuca, and lastly A Hero for Wanla and The Battle for Wanla by Tony Dieter Lizzy. If you would like to know more about the books that I read this month, I will link this month's wrap up in the description box below for you to peruse. So these are the books that I hauled this month. A little excessive, especially for me for lately. But, uh, you know, I've read some of them already, so it's not too bad. I guess we need to do some math, right? So at the end of September, we're going with end of September, because I've read some things since then, end of September, I hauled 16 books, and four of those I'd already read, so 12 count, 
towards going on to my TBR. So that's 182. I then read seven books this month and all seven of those count as coming off, which is not something that happens very often. Um, so 175. I had no DNFs or unhauls this month. So we get to stay at 175. 175. So we're five up from the month before. That's life, I guess. If you have read any of the books that I hauled this month, please let me know in the comments below if you like them, if you didn't like them, how you felt about them. If there's one that you think I should prioritize, let me know down below. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, and book related videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, bonus videos on the weekends. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you subscribe. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!